Well, hey there, folks, and welcome to another episode of Lutherville. Well, I'm very, very happy to report that this week uh, things have greatly improved from the update that I had last week. <laughs> uh, for those of you who didn't catch last week's update, I was basically complaining about the fact that pretty much nothing has been done, uh, nothing has been completed on my tiny house for the past five months, and I was quite upset about that. And just this morning, I actually received a series of photos from Tennessee Tiny Homes showing all the work that has been done, and yeah, it's really great. I'm in a really great mood now. <laughs> I feel much better about things because now I actually have some photographic evidence that things are being completed. I actually spoke with a friend of mine a few days ago, and I was even talking to a lawyer about this whole situation, and we both remarked about the fact that if you're doing a project this big and it falls behind schedule, that's not a big deal, right? I mean, any reasonable person expects that to happen. By the way, I didn't give you a title for this video. Let me, let me, let me pause, give you a title. <laughs> uh, this one, I guess you could say that we are actually uh, starting to put up the walls. We're starting the real framing of the house. So that's what this video is about. So anyway, let me jump back to what I was starting to say. So you expect a project of this size to be delayed, right? I mean, that's, that's not a big deal. Any reasonable person is gonna say, yeah, okay, we might not make the deadline. However, if a project like this is two months behind schedule, well, you expect, you know, 80% of the project to be done, right? Like if you actually see that progress is being made and okay, the walls are going up and yeah, we're starting to put in the plumbing and things like that, but okay, we're behind schedule. All right, that's fine. But that wasn't the case with me. With me, I had an empty trailer for five months. So that's why I was really ticked off. And even John uh, of Tennessee Tiny Homes, when he sent me all the information this morning, you know, he was apologizing. And thankfully, he even said, you know, he thought that I was justified. He's like, I can understand your frustration. So it's really great to see that they're finally making some progress. So here we go. Here are a bunch of the photos of the progress of Galatea Meridian, the name of my tiny house that is gonna be out here at Lutherville. The straps that are gonna attach the house to the trailer still need to be welded. You can see uh, in this image, they're bolted through the frame, but they haven't been welded to the trailer yet. Now right here, we can see the insulation. Uh, I was assured that that is not water damage. That weird discoloration is just uh, part of the insulation. And this right here, we can see actually some of the exterior framing uh, going up around the, uh, that would be what, the passenger side. Uh, here we can see a close-up of the metal framework that goes over the gooseneck itself. So that uh, will actually be the bedroom area. Then uh, this is looking from the living room area into the loft bedroom that goes over the neck. And we can see there's a window uh, on each side. Uh, this right here is the same view, but standing further back. This is kind of more by the front door of the tiny house, looking into the living room and bedroom area. This right here shows that uh, the, the actual foundation is also attached on the inside with these L brackets. It's not just around the outside of the framing. This is kind of in the bedroom looking towards the back. So the left-hand side is where the porch and the front door is, and the right-hand side is the uh, bathroom. And here's another view of the straps that are gonna be welded to the trailer to secure the house to the trailer structure. Uh, once again, another view of that, so we can kind of see how uh, there's gonna be a lot of attachment points. And again, there's those L brackets on the inside. Uh, this is looking at the back porch and that left-hand corner is gonna be the tool shed area. And 
This again is another angle uh, that we see. So there's the tool shed. You can kind of see the foundation that's underneath that was welded to uh, make up for the angle. And here's another where you can see the, the angle of the ramps uh, had to be flattened out so the tool shed and the bathroom area uh, can be taken into account. Right here, of course, again, is the metal uh, framework for the bedroom area. And once we move on from there, we can see the inside uh, looking again at the bedroom area and we can see the metal framework that is going over the gooseneck. And once again, <laughs> another, another angle of the framework of the bedroom section of the house. Now we get to the water tanks and right here we can see that's the main fresh, fresh water tank. And uh, there's also, uh, on the upper part of the image, we can see uh, those are uh, the gray water tanks, which are going to be under the floor in the bathroom area. And here we can see a better shot of, uh, there are two tanks in the, the bathroom area. Uh, those are intended for the gray water. And then in the foreground here, we have the one 300-gallon uh, tank that is intended to be the fresh water tank. So I'm thinking that the water tanks should be positioned kind of like this. Uh, so you can see here we have the two tanks that are kind of butted up against this interior wall. And then the, the those would be a gray water tank uh, and probably fresh water because I was thinking it would be it would be cool to run these two together because basically we have a, the 300 gallon here which is the fresh water and then we have a 100 gallon gray and another 100 gallon gray. But I was thinking instead of tying both of these together as gray water, you should tie these two together as fresh water. And so you'd have a 100 gallon gray water tank and then 400 gallons of fresh water. Now the reason that I would say, you know, slide these two tanks against the center wall instead of the outer wall is because water is really, really heavy. Uh, it weighs a little bit over eight pounds per gallon which means that when a 200 or no the 300 gallon tank rather when the 300 gallon tank is filled uh, that's over one ton of weight so obviously you want to be careful about where you position water tanks you don't want it too far to the side you want everything to be as centered as possible because that's a heck of a lot of weight to be throwing to one side of the trailer or another and if it was set up like this, uh, that also gives all this space up front where uh, the battery bank could go uh, right, in, right into this area here. So that's what I'm thinking uh, would be good for the water tanks is position the freshwater tank uh, dead center right there so the weight is distributed nice and evenly and the gray water tanks are as close to uh, the center wall uh, as possible. Wow. Okay, that was that was crazy. As I walked uh, as I walked back to the camera here, and I was looking towards the camera, I could see some dust flying up just from me walking the couple of feet. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Let's hope there's no valley fever in that, right? Now, nah, I'm sure I'll be fine. So, anyway, uh, there now you've seen the progress. And uh, once again, I'm incredibly grateful and really happy uh, that they're actually starting to do some work on the tiny house. Hopefully uh, this is the beginning of a new phase, right? And from this point out, uh, I'll start to get more frequent updates and we'll start to see things really happening. Um, I, I certainly hope that I don't go for three months without seeing any more photos again. Uh, that, would, <laughs> that would not be cool. So this is really awesome uh, obviously it is now the end of september unfortunately that means i'm going to have to pay october's rent i'm not going to be getting it by october 1st i'm sure um, but that gives me all of october to start wrapping things up and you know if if they can continue at this pace i would certainly hope that me by november 1st um, i'll be able to pick it up we'll we'll see what happens so as always I thank all of you so much for watching, 
And, you know, really share, share the video. If you like it, if you know other people that are interested in this kind of stuff, let them know about this channel. Because you'll notice that, like, my channel is like a really weird <laughs> kind of, uh, it's at a weird point in the sense that I have a pretty big audience. I mean, I have hundreds of people watching my videos. I have thousands of subscribers, but I don't have, like, massive amounts yet. So it would be cool if that would increase, and that can happen with your help. So... If you really enjoy the stuff that I'm doing, uh, just, just let some folks know about it. So thank you again. Thanks to Tennessee Tiny Homes for starting some, some work on this. And like I said, hopefully the updates will be coming much more frequently from this point forward. Take care, folks. And I will shake away the cloudy sky. Toes up to the fire And I will sing your cares away